Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. साउंड माइक जो है वो म्यूट के है सर हाँ जी अब अब कैसी आवाज है बस बढ़िया है सर है ना बिल्कुल जैसे वो जर्मन जर्मन साउंड बॉक्स होता है है ना क्लियर इज इट क्लियर यस सर ओके कैसे हैं शैलेंद्र जी आप सर बढ़िया हूँ सर Feeling quite happy, sir, to be connected yeah. with your great institution and uh, to see you and to meet yeah, so many you. younger people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Actually, we would have liked, you know, to invite you here, but due to this situation uh, again. Live situation, uh, yes. <laughs> well, I have been to your uh, Deccan College yes. earlier two or three times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, that's why we wanted you to do this here. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. इंटरेक्शन होता है ना लिविंग पीपल है हाँ वो डेट डिफरेंट डेट डिफरेंट डेट्स वेरी डिफरेंट बट एट लिस्ट वर्चुअली डू दैट ये वर्चुअल मींस अन नेचुरल जी सर शुरू करेंगे हाँ प्लीज एस यू प्लीज एस यू प्लीज सर ओके सर जैसे आप ठीक समझे Good afternoon, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Prof. Prashad Joshi, Honorable Prof. Kapil Kapoor, today's guest of honor, colleagues and students. On behalf of Deccan College Guest Lecture and Webinar Subcommittee, I, Shalendra Mohan, welcome you all to this bicentenary series of lectures. As we know, the Deccan College Postgraduate and Research Institute, the third oldest educational institute in the country, is celebrating its bicentenary this year. To mark this occasion, the university has proposed to organize special lectures to be delivered by eminent scholars in the field of archaeology, linguistics, and Sanskrit. <laughs> Today we are going to listen to Professor Kapil Kapoor. I request our Vice Chancellor, Professor Prasad Joshi, to welcome the guest of honor, Professor Kapil Kapoor. Thank you, Mohan sir. Actually, as mentioned by Professor Mohan, we are celebrating this bicentennial year. Deccan College is known to the world for pioneering the linguistics and also the discipline of archaeology in our country. So, what should we be fitting to do to this institute other than organizing a guest lecture series uh, which deals with this discipline. Of course, Sanskrit is also there. So, this is the third lecture in the series, in this bicentennial webinar series. So, I am on behalf of the Deccan College and also on my own behalf, I take this opportunity to welcome Professor Kapil Kapoorji here. He is always with us and he has been here as you mentioned right now. And this is our great, uh, we, are, we are with this great opportunity to, like, uh, to listen to him. So, once again, I welcome him. And uh, without taking so much of time, uh, I would request Dr. Mohan to continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mohan, uh, now I request Dr. Subhangi Kardile uh, to introduce Prof. Kapil Kapoor. Hello. Yes. Uh, it is a pleasure to introduce a veteran academician, Professor Kapil Kapoor, to all of you. Professor Kapil Kapoor is the chairperson of Indian Institute of Advanced Study Shimla. Before that, he was the chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi Antarashtra Hindi Vishwavidyalaya Vartha. He is an eminent scholar of linguistics and literature and an authority on Indian intellectual traditions and Sanskrit knowledge systems. He has published numerous books and monographs and over a hundred research papers on language, linguistics and Indian intellectual traditions. He is the editor-in-chief of 11 volume Encyclopedia of Hinduism and chief editor of the Encyclopedia of Indian Poetics. His other publications include Mutual Regard, an anthology of Indo-Irish writings, Indra Vijayam, the India narrative, Dimensions of Panini Grammar, Indian grammatical system, Text and Interpretation, the Indian Tradition, Semantic, Structure and the Verb, a Propositional Analysis, Language, Linguistics and Literature, the Indian Perspective, Literary Theory, Indian Conceptual Framework, Indian Tradition of Language Studies and Contemporary Relevance, Knowledge, Individual and Society in Indian Traditions, to name a few. Professor Kapoor has a long and illustrious career in academics and administration. To give you a glimpse, he was the Dean of the School of Language, Literature and Cultural Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University. He was the Chairman of the Center for Linguistics and English. 
Uh, he was the visiting professor at Irish Academy of Cultural Heritage, University of Ulster from 2005 to 2009. He is the nominated member, external advisor, India Studies at Trinity College, Dublin. He was the convener of the 10th Plan UGC Committee for Universities of Kashmir and North Gujarat at Tamil University. He was also the core member of UGC's Curriculum Development Committee for Sanskrit in the year 2000. Professor Kapoor has received numerous awards for his academic contribution. He has been honored as a distinguished scholar by Kumar Nandarendra Pratap Singh Kalyan Kari Trust, Gorakhpur in 2012. He was honored by the Uberoika Foundation California in 2011 for his contribution to linguistics and <coughs> Indic civilization studies. For his contribution to Indian education, he was honored by Shiksha Sanskriti Uttham Nyasa in 2010. And he was also honored by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, India, for his contribution to Sanskrit studies in 2003. It is a privilege, sir, to have you with us today. And now I request uh, him to deliver the third lecture in the Deccan College Bicentenary Guest Lectures and Webinar Series, sir. Uh, Jiti Rao Shubhangi, have a long, happy life. Bless you for... Uh, giving so many details, some of them I had, in the, most of them I have forgotten. You know, as you move along in life, we as a piche. You know, what is gone is bygone. And you keep moving forward and uh, stay in the present. Thank you very much. Very kindly you gave all the details. Mool uh, se my master hu. Teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, my 62nd year is this year to study. 62nd year. I started teaching when I was a 19 year old boy. I am now 81. And uh, I think getting senile partly. Certainly I have lost my teeth. So I am a toothless beauty. But I, my voice is alive. It continues. As long as Bhole Bhava Kripa Rahegi, Toh Bholte Rahegi. Chalendra Ji Ne, Mai Chale Pahle Isse, Mai Joshi Ji Ka Abhaar Vekt Karta Hoon, That He Thought Of Asking Me To Come, For This Very Prestigious, To This Very Prestigious Institute, A Very Important Institution, and thank you very much, Joshi Ji. Deccan College is a legend. It's a legend. 1821, it was established. Just three years after, the Marathas lost the battle near Pune. Peshwa Bajirao II lost the battle near Pune in 1818. But he was alive. He was he was given his near fiefdom by the British and he was also instrumental in, along with Dhabadeji and Alphinstam, the great Englishman. We are used to abusing them. But uh, if some of them had not been great devotees of Indian knowledge, we would have lost many things which we still have with us. Just to remind you, Ashoka's inscriptions we could not read. It was an Englishman who read them for us. And the Vidisha, the Vidisha rock sculptures were discovered by the English resident of Bhopal. So, Elphinstone was an admirer of Indian knowledge systems, traditions. And he was instrumental in uh, setting up this school to begin with. And uh, then Jamshed Ji gave money when it was shifted, as you know, to near the present campus. And uh, Nawade Ji also, third gentleman who contributed to it. I think as part of your 200th year celebrations, you should hold special lectures on all these four persons who, you know, established this institution. Nawade, Bajirao II, Alphinstone and Jamshedji. 
उनके ऊपर भव्य लेक्चर होने चाहिए उनके जीवन पर उनकी कंट्रीब्यूशन पर मैं डेक्कन कॉलेज कई बार आया हूं पहले और वहां हमने बहुत इंटरेस्ट दिया था जो लेक्सिकॉन बन रहा है मैसिव लेक्सिकॉन और मैंने देखा था कि उसमें किस तरह उस वहां उस वक्त जो आपके स्कॉलर्स थे पर्चियों के ऊपर कागज की पर्चियों के ऊपर एंट्रीज बनाते थे और तब भी नौ लाख के करीब एंट्रीज बनी हुई थी देन आई नो दैट डेकन कॉलेज रैन इन टू मॉनिटरी प्रॉब्लम एंड फंडिंग प्रॉब्लम एंड एट द टाइम ऑफ हरि गौतम जी वेन ई वॉज दूजीसी चेयरमैन आई थिंक ए स्मॉल टीम वेंट टू डेकन कॉलेज आई वॉज वन ऑफ देम एंड वी प्रपोज a very massive grant to that project but as it often happens in this country unfortunately the government and it did not work out i am sure things are better now and uh, uh, there are no such uh, material problems as the institute such a prestigious institute should not have faced but actually faced तो मेरा नमन है इंस्टीट्यूट को भी इनके फाउंडर्स को भी कितना बड़ा योगदान दिया उन्होंने हमारी संस्कृति और हमारी ज्ञान परंपरा में इतने बड़े बड़े विद्वान इस इंस्टीट्यूट से निकले कितने बड़े बड़े विद्वान निकले आपकी अपनी जो साइट है उसी में आपको मिलेंगे और इसी इंस्टीट्यूट में नाइनटीन में पहला एक यूएसए यूएसएआईडी और ब्रिटिश काउंसिल मिलके एक रिफ्रेशर कोर्स किया था फॉर लिंग्विस्टिक्स और उसमें जितने बड़े बड़े नाम बाद में इस देश में छाए रहे देवी प्रसन्न पटनायक जी भा कृष्ण मूर्ति जी आर एन श्रीवास्तव जी ये सब लोग उसमें एज पार्टिसिपेंट्स और एच एस गिल जी एच एस गिल ये सब लोग पार्टिसिपेंट्स थे और इन सब लोगों को डायरेक्टली वहीं से उठा के सीधे अमेरिका ले गए और वहां उनको अमेरिकन लिंग्विस्टिक्स पढ़ाई गई डेकन कॉलेज डेकन कॉलेज बीइंग द सीट ऑफ इंडियन आर्कियोलॉजी इंडियन लर्निंग एंड संस्कृत वॉज प्रमोटिंग हैज प्रमोटेड इंडिक नॉलेज but there people were brought very bright young bright young people at that time they were young relatively young they were the they were good minds best minds at that time in the discipline they were taken to they were taken to usa and they learned transformational grammar transformational generative grammar they came back all by one by one and they all established department they headed the departments because in those days there was a great value attached to an american degree and whoever came back from america with a degree even if he was a reader in india he was made the head so great prestige to the cross atlantic degree and then there was ford foundation and then there was pl480 program pl480 in which you remember india ran short of wheat america gave us wheat and the agreement was that the cost of that wheat will be kept in india and used for education from that money from that money usa continued to Take lot of young, bright people from this place to America under their full bright and half bright programs, and uh, that is and they funded the libraries of India, books. So we had a phase where uh, the Anglo-American Academy, Anglo-American Academy, uh, dominated the Indian Academy. 
as I used to say, I am not, I am not at all, I am not at all being, uh, you know, saying something inimically, no, not at all. I am bringing to you the facts. How is it that from 1970s onwards, 1970s onwards, Indian social sciences, Indian social sciences and humanities, they were all influenced by the American theory. And the research model became ethnographic. Ethnographic research model is difference-oriented research model. Pani ko Brahman Tirdam kehte hai aur dusre Tani kehte hai. I used to call it Tani Tirdam research. So this America, the theory came from America and we were the data. So we became subordinated, subordinated to the American Academy and in the process, in the process, the Indian, Indian knowledge systems and we have, if we know the discipline, certainly in linguistics, we have an unequal tradition, unequal. West cannot, West cannot even, you know, uh, even claim that they have even 10% of but our tradition, rich tradition in uh, linguistics or language thinking is. But it was all submerged. It was all submerged. As I used to tell my research students in, America, in, uh, in JNU, that there are two kinds of theories. First of all, I used to say, all theory is transporting. It transports you. Transports. Some theories transport you vertically and some theories transport you horizontally. So if you work on American theory, you have chances of getting a teachership or a fellowship or an award and you will go to America. But if you work on Indian theories, you will have no such chance. You will be transported vertically. Aapko atma lab hoga, aap khud prabuddh ho jayenge, parantu Ab Atlantic Parni Karenge. As you know, for almost two and a half decades, the refusal of the American visa was the greatest tragedy that could strike a young Indian. Hmm? And uh, the craze, well, things have changed. Things have changed now for many, many reasons. Political, social, economic, and India itself reasserting itself as it has always done in its long history of 10,000 years. Because we have had a history of loss and recovery. 28 Vyasas. Vyas Parampara is the parampara of recovery of a lost tradition. So 28 times India lost its knowledge, but recovered it again. And uh, in one of my lectures in Kolkata in early 90s, I earned the ire of many people by saying, that Max Muller is the 29th Vyasa. And of course, we are all familiar how Max Muller is abused by Indians. That he was a missionary and he was an instrumental in, uh, for Christianity and all that. Remember his chair was funded in <laughs> Cropsford by, by, by the Christian mission. But for 62 years, for 62 years, that man worked on Indian Sanskrit manuscripts, fragmented, broken manuscripts, put them together, put them together, edited them and produced 23 Indian texts, 23, including the Rig Veda. He reconstituted the Rig Veda and that was the parameter which used to decide who is the Vyasa. Because we know that the last one, Saraswat, on the banks of what is today Markanda, on the banks of the dried up Saraswati, he had, you know, once Saraswati dried, dried up, he reorganized the Rig Veda and he is known as the Vyasa. But then the 28th Vyasa is the Ved Vyasa, the Mahabharata Vyasa, you know and he composed Puranas and the other things and so on. So, Max Miller, you know, 62 years. And as you know, when Tilak 
Bal Gangadhar Tilak was arrested and taken to Andaman. It was Max Miller who got him released. Max Miller, at the end of 62 years, he was about 82, 83, he was asked that you have spent your life working on Indian knowledge, Indian texts, but you have never gone to India. He said, and please see the answer. Uh, he said, when I had a time, I did not have the money. And now, I do not have the time. But if I ever go to India, I will go to Varanasi and I shall like to be cremated there. Cremated there. Were you aware of this? Were you aware of this? So, in the re recovery, in the recovery of our vocabulary, in the recovery of our knowledge, people like Maxwell, Wilson, Elphinstone, and many other Germans, French, our Renaissance, it is claimed that our Renaissance took place in Bengal. No. The Bengal revival was a Anglo-Saxon revival. We were, we, we were reactivated by English knowledge and liberal philosophy. That was not our Renaissance. If Renaissance, as in Europe, meant recovery of your own knowledge traditions, in the case of Europe, it was Greek and uh, the, the Roman thought. In our case, that Renaissance took place in Germany and France not in India, in Germany and France. And that is where the scholars regained and revived our Indian tradition. Thanks to them, we are grateful to them, and I hope we will gratefully acknowledge the work, the great work they did, the great work they have done. And even today, largest number of international scholars who want to learn Sanskrit, unfortunately, they don't come to India, they go to Germany. I mean, we have to ask ourselves. We keep talking about Vishu Guru and uh, we were this and we were that. But what are we now? How can we recover ourselves? Isn't it? Now, when I'm an old man, I get carried away. Like... Uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge's rhyme of the ancient mariner, the ancient mariner he used to say, that when I find a listener, I have to tell my story. The agony returns and I have to tell my story. So I generally, I have, this is the occasion because it was Deccan College, this is where great scholars are produced, this is the center of Indian knowledge system, and this is where the generative grammar, transformation of grammar theory all began in 1958. And for, for almost two and a half decades, three decades, the American Academy has dominated our... Even today, even today, we are still an appendage, still an appendage. We are... We don't use our theories. We borrow the theory and we put our data there to either uh, negate or to affirm or to extend or to apply the theories that we receive. But as a matter, good. But do, today we are in the process of recovery. You see? We are in the process of recovery. We have, uh, I don't know how many of you have seen my two volumes of Indian Knowledge Systems, which was uh, published in, I think, 2000 or something. It was the product of the seminar that uh, my one my my very revered elder scholar G C Pandeji, and I am not a conference type. I am not a project type, but he asked me to do a conference on Indian knowledge systems and produce the book. And it was done in 1998, 99. And if you look at that book, I don't have that book here. I could sh you should look at the cover, the title page, the, the flap. On that. You have two images. You have the Vag Devi of Raja Bhoj. You know, Bhoj, Bhoj was the 10th, 11th century king of Thar in Madhya Pradesh. He was, he was a warrior. He was a warrior. He was a scholar. 
scholar. He wrote compositions like Sringar Prakash in literary Saraswati Kantha Bharana Vyakarana Grammar. And he was a great fighter. In, the, in fact, the Islamic historians call him the greatest enemy of Islam. He was a great warrior. We have in this country a warrior, scholar, saint, parampara, right up to Guru Gobind Singh. Guru Gobind Singh, who was four in one. He was a poet, he was a scholar, he was a warrior, and he was a saint. You see? So, the, if you see the title of that book, you have the Bhojaraj had established a, 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 a Vidya Shala, you know, a Vidya Shala, a center of learning. And he had put there the goddess Vag Devi, Vag Devi, the goddess of Vaka, language, speech, beautiful statue. And naturally, at the time when the invaders came, this statue was, the arms are broken. The arms are broken and it was lying in a heap that the British, with their characteristic love for art and learning and respect for India, they took that statue to London and it is still there and you can see it there in no arms, Bhag Devi. So Indian knowledge, India's knowledge lost its arms stopped working, isn't it? But then the second symbol I have put there on the title is that of the Konark wheel, Konark wheel of time. Art usme, art chakra hai, art. And uh, that is the wheel of time. So our knowledge system was disrupted, but the wheel of time has moved, wheel of time, and we are now recovering ourselves. I remember I, start, I started the first course in Indian grammatical tradition in Indian universities in 1975 in JNU. Of all the places in JNU. In 1975. When nobody, nobody was talking about or thinking that in order to, to desubjugate our mind, to decolonize our mind, we have to relocate ourselves in our own tradition, tradition of knowledge. At that time, by some happy accident, by some, by a great, great teacher I accidentally met when I, when I was a lecturer in Delhi University, lecturer of English, I did a diploma in linguistics. And there was Pandit Chandrasekhar Ji, I must remember him with gratitude, who in his lectures on applied linguistics, he used to talk of Panini, Patanjali. I had never studied Sanskrit in my school or college. See? And he kept dropping those names. And I was a little, naturally I was young. I was young once, I assure you, I assure you, I am 81 now, but I was young once. And uh, I naughtily asked him one day, was Panini, Panini a cousin of Toscanini. Toscanini was an was Italian sculptor, you know, Italian sculptor. I said, was he a cousin of Toscanini? And uh, Chandrasekhar ji said, Are beta, he was a great grammarian and he belonged to your part of the country. He was from Punjab. And uh, he is the only grammar, which is only grammar of a natural, of natural language which is complete, comprehensive, comprehensive, rule-bound and explicit, and explicit. I was very, uh, I said, uh, okay, I'll try it, I'll see. And uh, I went to the library and uh, I took out the Sanskrit Astadhyay. Of course, I can read the, I could read the alphabet, Devnagri would make no sense because the, this little, little book was a fortress. There was no table of contents. There was no name of the publisher or editor. There was no index. It just started, Ayunna Yonga Yocha Hai Varata Lala Jabanja Jabagadadasa and ended at AA. 
I said, what is this? So I went back to the teacher next day. Tell the shaker there said, sir, what the people saw in the other. So he said, if you go to a nuclear physics book, you will have the same problem. You have to become an adhikari, you have to you have to prepare yourself. So I said, but then sir, I I really can't uh, understand uh, the complex uh, compounds of Sanskrit. It's very difficult. So he said, all right. He gave me the name of Vasu, S. Vasu, who translated Ashtadhyay into English in 1896. That was two volume book. So I went to the library and I opened it. The first, uh, you know, Vrithiya Nature, the first Sutra, and uh, it was segmented into Pada, Uska Pada Parksa, Unka Unko Paraphrasta. Sutra ka paraphrase tha. Then Vaman Jai Ditti ki commentary thi. Vaman Jai Ditti ki. Kul Katyayan ki uske upar vartik thi. And then Patanjali ka uska explanation. That one sutra took five pages in Vasu. I said it has become worst. I went to Chandra Shekhar ji and said it is worst. I can't make sense now at all. He said, chhod do. Hey, Tumare Baska Kishinya Baska Naya, you are not studied and how can you now at this age and uh, I mean at this in this short time? He said, Sir, let me tell you, I will join the Amulet here after the diploma. Till then I had no intention. I will join Amulet and in the second year I will write a dissertation on my mother tongue and I will write it in Panini's model. He said, you don't know what you're saying. And, uh, well, Mrs. Kapoor, who is also 81 now, she is a witness for two and a half years. I think day and night I spent in the library, in Delhi University Library, magnificent library. And I actually produced a dissertation. The proposition and structure of Punjabi verbs in Panini's Karak framework. That later on became extended to my PhD thesis. And that, that was used by Rajiv Sangharji. You may have heard of him, computer, computational, you know, the, the director of BHU, uh, IID, and uh, now of Triple IID, and very wonderful scholar. He was a young assistant professor at that time. He invited me to Kanpur, and he used that. He said that, it is on this book that we are preparing our first morphological analyzer. analyzer. I was just surprised. Uh, I have not, nothing to do with the computer, but then how these things are working. Anyway, the, enough of autobiography, autobiography. We are in the middle of a recovery now, revival as we said. And I said that I started uh, in 1975 and a lot of my colleagues, senior colleagues, very, very senior colleagues, they, they considered me some kind of a madcap. In fact, my head of the department, uh, literature, she asked me that new literature have come, you know, New Zealand, Australia, American literature, and the, all the publishers have given three books, they are all here. These are these just starting. If you, you are young, you take to it. If you take to it, an international air ticket will be always in your pocket. I am thankful to her for that sentence because that gave me such a mean motive to study. I thought to myself that one cannot spend one's time studying books just to get an air ticket. Just to get an air ticket. So I told her, I'll tell you some days later. Then some days later she asked me, I said, no, I'll not study this. I'll not read. This was in 72 in JNU. She said, what will you do? I said, I know that in this country, in this land, Great books have been written, which I cannot either read, and certainly I cannot understand. I will read those, I will understand those, and I will teach those. That is what I am going to do. You, you are mad, sorry. And then from, it's a long story, from Indian grammatical tradition to Indian literary tradition to Indian philosophical tradition, then to textual courses in Ashtadhyayi and in Vakya Padiyam and uh, in Natya Shastra and in Yoga Sutras and a whole research area we developed in JNU 
there we reverse the reverse the tide instead of america being the theory west and we being the data my students researched by using our theory and using their text and their data as data so we reverse the reverse the research research mode and uh, jenny was the first to in fact start studies of indian knowledge systems and knowledge so coming now to your with this elaborate uh, background uh and this is this partly explains you know why why i had uh, you know i had come into linguistics then i came into sanskrit and i came into indian intellectual tradition it's a long story but then 62 years is a long time 62 years is a very long time if you stand in water for so many years your feet are going to get wet and it has happened like that and i am very in fact my if i look back i look back i don't feel that i have spent 62 years teaching it's all concentrated i feel that i am talking to you people i i am again in my classroom in jail on the first day and talking to my students and sharing things with them now let's talk about indian linguistic tradition because uh, that's what uh, shailendra ji wanted me to talk about of course if you are as your indian knowledge systems हमारे एक आपके यहाँ पुणे में होते थे पंडित भागवत शास्त्री जी बहुत ही शुभ्र बहुत ही शुभ्र शुभ्र और श्रृंगारी व्यक्ति थे एफर्जेंट प्योर पंडित भागवत शास्त्री जी आई बस लिसन टू हिम इन मध्य प्रदेश वेन ही वॉज ऑलरेडी एटी टू अर्थो उनका पहला वाक्य यू सी ही वॉज टू गिव ए लेक्चर एंड आई अप्रोच देम एंड आई सेट सर काइंडली बीच बीच में हिंदी बोल दीजिए बिकॉज सच पीपल मेरी सूर्य नारायण शास्त्री जी ग्रेट ग्रामेरियन आई मैटिन तिरुपति सच पीपल दे ओनली नो संस्कृत दे ओनली स्पीक संस्कृत यू सी बट बिकॉज दे हैव सो मच टू से अदर पीपल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड I keep on talking in English, but I have nothing to say, so nobody listens. But when you have something to say, you can speak in any language. People will try to understand you. So, I have only said that a little Hindi. Such people don't talk. He just looked at me, and he told me so much Sanskrit. He told me that day. His first sentence, which I have repeated n number of times, n number of times, Bharatiya Gyan Parampara. सनातन गंगा प्रवाह भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा सनातन गंगा प्रवाह ये जैसे गंगा का प्रवाह सनातन है और उसी प्रकार भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा की भी जो परंपरा है वो सनातन है और वो प्रवाह है वो एक प्रवाह है अब प्रवाह जो होता है या जो नदी होती है वो नित्य भी होती है और व्यवहारिक भी होती है अब जैसे गंगा तो गंगा है पर गंगा का जो जल आज है वो दस साल पहले वाला जल नहीं है हजार साल पहले वाला नहीं है पांच हजार साल वाला नहीं है तो वो नित्यता नहीं है उसमें प्रवाह नित्यता है प्रवाह नित्यता है पर वो प्रवाह नित्यता में जल की नित्यता नहीं है प्रवाह की नित्यता है बहने की नित्यता है सो दैट में भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा सनातन गंगा प्रवाह मतलब ये नहीं कि वो वही एक चीज चलती रही It grew, extended, and in in one of my one of my or many not one but more than one of my lectures, I have tried to elaborate on this river analogy for India's knowledge systems. You see, river analogy. What is the gomuk of India's knowledge system? The gomuk is the Rig Veda, the Rig Veda, and what is the What is the Gangotri of this knowledge system? Where you have the first codification, codification, first temple in Gangotri, but first codification on the bank of the river, where all the Upanishads were composed. See, so like that, and you go right down, it becomes a garland, and you come down to Bhakti, you come down to Andal in Tamil Nadu, sixth century, 
then come to Baswana, then come to Gyaneshwar, then come to Narsi Mehta, then come to Meera, then come to Guru Nanak, then come to Ramanand, and then you go to Jai Dev and go to Shankar Dev, and you have the whole garland in a, a unity of a unity of consciousness in this country was created by the continuity and the cumulativeness of this knowledge tradition which flew which blew, flowed like a river from the Gaumukha Vigmeda. So in so many disciplines, you can look at it in so many. There are so many domains of knowledge. So many domains of knowledge. You name a domain of knowledge. In fact, if you look at the look at the program of an uh, Sanskrit in the World Sanskrit Conference, let's say you look look I will advise you, look at the nineteen eighty eight. Because of these days it is becoming a little more, you know, loose. Loose. But nineteen eighty eight in Vayana uh, in Vayana, which I attended, it was still controlled by the Europeans. Mind you, Sanskrit is the only language on which you have an international conference organized by Europeans. They don't organize the international conference on Greek, they don't organize on Latin, but they organize on Sanskrit. Because Sanskrit is, has all the knowledge, all the knowledge stored in its vocabulary. Not for nothing in 1994, Justice Kuldeep Singh in a Supreme Court judgment you know, declared that Sanskrit is not only just a language, it is the vocabulary of our thought and culture. So if you look at the Oriental Conference brochure, you will find that you can have a whole university only with, with, with all possible disciplines where all the texts, texts come from the Indian heritage. Indian storehouse of our, our Bodhik Granthoki, Granthoka Bandar, the totality of our intellectual text is larger than the intellectual text of all the languages of the world put together. Larger than that. Many times larger. So, but uh, like Hanumanji, who had forgotten his strength, we also forgot ourselves, forgot our strength. And uh, we are uh, in the process of maybe, we are being reminded by Jambuans. Uh, I think the Germans and the British acted like the Jambavanta and they reminded us of what we are, of what we are and what we, we are now trying to be what we were. But it's a very difficult journey because we are caught in a split, we are a divided self. Our vikshipta man sikta hai, vikshipta, khandit man sikta hai, adi idar, adi udar. Very few of us are able to really, you know, plant ourselves into, into our own self only. Very difficult. But then, it's going on. So, linguistics is one of the disciplines in which we have a Ganga Prabha. We have a Ganga Prabha in Bhasha Chintan. Because you see, scientific and all that, Humare haan Gyan or Vigyan ka bhed bada clear hai. Vigyan, Vigyan observational sciences hai. Observational sciences. Empirical science. We do with the Bhautika, with the observable, quantifiable, measurable, measurable, you know, world. And jnana deals with what is not amenable to your senses. It's not amenable to measurement. It's not amenable to. And in our in our hierarchy, jnana is above vijnana. See? So our great seers, our great rishis. They used to see their eyes shut, not with their eyes open. Our great seers, Rishi, who aankhe khol ke dekhte thi, aankhe khol ke nahi dekhte thi, aankhe band kar ke dekhte thi. Or intan or manan was the epistemology, was the epistemology, not the laboratory, not the telescope, not the microscope. You see, it is amazing that Arya Bhatt in fourth century would say all those things with no people from the Jodrell Bank telescope, you know, observe the planets and the planetary parts, and now they reaffirm that Aryabhat in 4th century could do it purely on the basis of mathematics, by observing the movements of the planets over here, over here, and then, you know, tracing and tracking the movement through his arithmetic, through his mathematics, 
said something about the about the solar system, sun being at the center, earth going around the sun, you see all these, and earth being a, a round object, you know, the very word we have for geography, Bhu Gol, you see, Bhu Gol, but West, till a 17th, 18th century kept on believing that earth is flat, earth is flat, you see, and in all those multifarious disciplines, linguistics is one major very major discipline. Not linguistics, because linguistics is now our uh, American word which we use, but we say language, language study, language thinking, thinking about language. It is at the center of, thinking about language is at the center of, center of our knowledge traditions, our all knowledge. Language is at the center. I think Fritz Stahl, a very great scholar. He worked on the uh, Nambudri Brahmins and the Yagyak, Yagyak uh, traditions in Kerala. And he has said, he has, a, he has a wonderful insight in one of his articles. He says that language is central to the Indian mind just as geometry is central to the Greek mind. Geometry is central to the Greek mind. Now, they, they, the whole, the rest of it, now you reconstruct, you reconstruct. Geometry being the key, the Greek mind means, so for the Greeks, the reality was terra firma, terra firma, which you can measure, track, cut, recommend, put together, rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. But for the Indian mind, Indian mind, reality is not terra firma. Reality is what is constructed by language. Constructed by language. So you go to your Rig Veda, to the hymn of Dirg Tamas. Hymn of Dirg Tamas. Where the sheer, sheer's name is also Dirg Tamas. Deep darkness. Deep darkness. You see, he says, Gauri Mimaye Salilani Takshati. Language cuts forms in the ocean of reality. For us, Reality is not terra firma. It's not something in which you can you can draw a triangle or a square and uh, you know like on the ground you can on the terra firma. Reality for the Indian mind is terra cognita, terra cognita, thinking. And we give names, we give names to forms that we observe because if you go into the Vedanta, Vedanta sutras, the Brahma sutras which is the culmination of the Shastras, and you go into the Advaita philosophy, and you go with Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya, you, what do you understand? That this whole universe, your universe, is pulsating matter, energized matter. I'm sure you're aware that in the six Shastras, which are called theistic, among there, theistic, the definition for theistic and atheistic in India is different. For us, God is not the parameter for theism. The parameter for theism is acceptance of Vedas as authority, Shabda Pramana. If you agree with Shabda Pramana, you are atheistic, otherwise you are atheistic. So both and giant thinkers do not accept Shabda Pramana, Veda. So they are called atheistic. Huh? But interestingly, our theistic Shastra, six Shastra, out of six Shastra, Mimansa, Sankhya, Vaisheshika. Vaisheshika, these three have no God. There is no God. God is not a category at all. And we call them theistic systems. There is no God at all. There is no God. And the fourth yoga, yoga has Ishwara. Because we have many names. You see, unlike the Western theological systems where you have one word God, God with a capital G. We have Paramatma, Ishwar, Bhagavan, Brahma, Parabrahma, Akala, you know, and it's, they are not synonyms because they cannot be, and it's very difficult when you are writing on this subject to choose the right word, the right word for, which, for the entity that you have in mind. Anyway, so Ishwara of Yoga is also is a, hardly a God because it is Smriti Hina. It has no memory. Now imagine a God who has no memory. You pray to God in the morning, or something, but the fellow has forgotten because he has no memory. And Smriti Hini Shwara Pandit Bhagavad Shastri. 
पंडित भागवत शास्त्री जी स्मृति ही न ईश्वर ईश्वरा नास्ति ईश्वरा नास्ति तो इन फोर सिस्टम देर इज नो गॉड इफ सम ऑफ यू हैव गॉन टू जगन्नाथ पुरी एंड यू सीन दी डेटीज देयर दी आइडल्स देयर द थ्री बलभद्र एंड भद्रा एंड कृष्ण यू फाइंड the deities they have no arms and they have no ears they have only eyes big eyes so for the hindu mind god is only a sakshi sakshi he is not a giver he is not a doer he is not a human property he doesn't have these human properties he is sakshi he is watching you so you better watch out and this there is a sakshi inside you also your sakshi is derived from that sakshi you can cheat anyone but you cannot cheat yourself whether what you did was right or wrong so that inwardness inward we each one of us have a bhogta experience and we have a sakshi the witness two birds tetri opposition two birds sit on the same tree one is the fruit and the other watches one is the fruit other watches there is a bhogta and there is a sakshi anyway So you see, in this grand uh, knowledge universe, in that in the pulsating matter and you know pulsating matter, language is at the center because the universe is pulsating matter. Because the six darshan are, in them the tattva is tattva. The ontology is called the tattva of mimamsa, and the epistemology is called the jnan of mimamsa. So these six darshan are, in them two two are pairs. है ना सांख्य योग सांख्य इज ऑन्टोलॉजी एंड योग इज अपिस्टमोलॉजी वैशेषिक वैशेषिक एंड न्याय वैशेषिक इज ऑन्टोलॉजी एंड न्याय इज अपिस्टमोलॉजी मीमांसा इज ऑन्टोलॉजी एंड वेदांत सूत्र पूर्व उत्तर मीमांसा इज दी इज दी अपिस्टमोलॉजी किला है ना ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ नॉलेज आप क्या जानना चाहते हैं एंड मीन्स ऑफ नॉलेज आप कैसे जानते हैं अपिस्टमोलॉजी तो In these six systems, let me say there is a, in in Vaisheshika, Vaisheshika, there are 24 ontological elements. Tattva hai, tattva. Unko enumerate kiya gaya hai. Sankhya un 24 ko leke ek category posit karta hai purusha. So prakriti and purusha. So you know the entire uh, this universe is made of prakriti and purusha. No, Purush does not man. Is not man here. Purush word is from Purush, that which inhabits the Purush, that which inhabits the body, the spirit, the Atma, the Paramatma, the Paramatma. So there is this principle, and there is the Prakriti, Prakriti, and these together twenty-five. Now energy and matter, energy and matter, the principle of energy and the principle of matter. Now great Indian minds. They thought, but energy is not independent of matter. It's not independent of matter. Energy is immanent in matter. Immanent in matter. So, if the whole universe is energized matter, just a lava होता है lava. So, pulsating matter है in which forms arise and forms collapse. जैसे नदी के किनारे आदि शंकरा चारे का beautiful example. आदि नदी के किनारे आप खड़े होते हैं और कहते हैं देखो कितनी बड़ी लहर आ रही है. ये बुड़बुड़ा कितना बड़ा है कितनी फेन किनारे पे लगी हुई है फ्रॉक द बबल एंड द वेव दीज आर फॉर्म्स विच आर राइज इन वाटर एंड दे कोलैप्स इन वाटर इन द सेम वे यू एंड आई यू एंड आई फॉर्म्स विच आर वरिजन हम आकृतियां उगरी हैं उगरी है इस पल्सेटिंग मैटर में एंड वी विल कोलैप्स आई आई टू दिस फॉर्म इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी And someday this bubble will burst, and it will go. It will go. So we are all, in one sense, we are all ghosts, you know. Because 1940, before 1940, I was not there, and after some time, I will not be there. So what am I? Who am I? Why I am here? These fundamental questions of philosophy, which Indian philosophy try to handle, arise from this. So in this pulsating matter, the whole reality is pulsating matter. It's not that of Brahma, but we give names to the forms. Names: ये पशु, पक्षी, ये परिणय, ये तोता है, ये कुर्सी है, 
ये मेज है ये कपिल कपूर है और ये मेरे बड़े भाई जमशेदकर जी बैठे हुए हैं नमस्कार जमशेदकर जी आपको नमस्कार तो हम फॉर्म्स को रिकॉग्नाइज करके उनको नाम देते हैं नेम टू नेम इज टू नो टू नेम इज टू नो एंड नाम रूप नाम रूप का संसार नाम रूप का संसार भाषा से बनता है तो भर्तरी हरी फिफ्थ सेंचुरी से जगत भाषा का विकल्प है भाषा का विकल्प है विकल्प इज वन फॉर्म ऑफ मीन्स ऑफ नॉलेज इन योग सूत्र है विकल्प ज्ञान इज दैट नॉलेज विच यू गेट ओनली फ्रॉम वर्ड्स विच यू विल नॉट गेट आउटसाइड फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल दॉर्ड राइबर रेबिट हॉर्ड रेबिट हॉर्ड रेबिट सींगो वाला क्या होता है रेबिट को देखिए माई हार्ट इज क्वाइब्रेट एनीवेज खरगोश वाला खरगोश नो यू विल नॉट फाइंड एनी सींगो वाला खरगोश बट वेन आई एम सेइंग सींगो वाला खरगोश कैन यू कंस्ट्रक्ट इट इन योर माइंड ऑफकोर्स वेलवटी सींग है छोटे छोटे है ना वेलवटी सींग है उसके सो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन समथिंग बींग रियल एंड समथिंग एग्जिस्टिंग सो दश श्रृंगा इज रियल बट इट डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट सो यू हैव टू वर्ब इन संस्कृत भवती और अस्थि अस्थि होना और बनना होना और बनना and no other language in the world has this has captured this uh, beautiful distinction between being real and existing like the famous example in indian philosophy uh, rope rope appearing as a snake he okay? go to the dark from the golden dark and there is a rope what is it oh, snake and he is terrified and he is frozen and he shakes and you know his uh, tingle his arms tingle somebody brings a light light and then they say oh it's a rope and it relaxes it's a rope so one knowledge has been superseded by another knowledge superseded but earlier it was a snake it turned out to be false and now it is a rope but even this knowledge is not categorical because when you lose your teeth like me at the age of 80 you will say what's the difference there is no difference between a snake and a rope they are the same after all they are forms which arise forms which arise but the snake the snake was real because you got frightened it was real it did not exist it did not exist so language gauri mimai salilani takshati language cuts forms in the ocean of reality so language is central into and center to the indian indian mind and in our system and uh, that centrality because because indian indian tradition has always attached a great value to knowledge bhagavad gita says nothing purifies like knowledge Achha, knowledge is the greatest ah, purifier okay, uh, water cannot uh, purify fire cannot be but knowledge purifies what a different metaphor from the western metaphor of knowledge is power hmm? knowledge is a purifier wo gyan agar aapne itna gyan arjit kar liya acche acche granth padhe par aapki bhasha mein krodh aapki bhasha mein gali aur aapki bhasha mein wo nikalta hai to aapko to gyan nahi mila gyan ne aapko purify nahi kiya knowledge is a great purifier and knowledge gyan marga of the three margas gyan marga karma marga and the bhakti marga gyan marg is mentioned first although mahatma buddha mahatma buddha contested that dharma does not consist in gyan dharma consists in karma and from that to bhagavad gita nishkam karm is the path which we can follow but then gyan marg and gyan and in bhagavad gita itself which is a suman by granth You see, the gyan, karma, and bhakti. You know these three margas are shown in close relationship. And Adi Shankara in his commentary on the second chapter says, "Gyan yukt karma hi bhakti hai. Gyan yukt karma hi bhakti hai. 
कभी फिर इस पे आपको कहानी सुनाएंगे ज्ञान कर्म युक्त भक्ति को अगर सेट करने के लिए तो लैंग्वेज इज एट द सेंटर एंड सो एंशंट ट्रेडिशन वी है एंशंट ट्रेडिशन वी हैव द वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट बुक 5000 7000 इयर्स अगो यू नो वी कैन सेफली से वी आर एट लीस्ट 7000 इयर्स सनोली अक्रॉस द यमुना नियर दिल्ली इन बागपत डिस्ट्रिक्ट दे हैव एक्सकेवेटेड ए ए राइट where you have chariots bronze chariots you have swords and you have skeletons and they seem to be of the mahabharat call mahabharat period age and it is dated as 7000 5000 something bc 7000 years ago and mehrangara also 7000 so but then suddenly suddenly you don't come at such a high technology it must have been preceded by 3 to 4000 years of civilization so we are the world's oldest and the only living civilization oldest living civilization surviving as such in spite of all that people say is wrong with us we could survive so ancient continuous cumulative tradition and uh, what was the motivation you know vedanga jaise hi ved compose hue as soon as the vedas were composed vedas were composed Simultaneously, almost the auxiliary sciences were also developed. Vedanga, Ved Anga, auxiliary sciences. Six auxiliary sciences, out of which four have to do with language. Four of them have to do with language: Shiksha, phonetics, Nirukt, etymology, Vyakaran, grammar, and Chand, meter. Meter. The other two are Kalp and Jyotish. That is uh, astronomy. Astronomy and sociology, Griya Sutra, Shauta Sutra, etc., etc. Now, unless you master these six sciences, you could not naturally understand the Vedas. So these sciences developed at the same time, at the same time. And uh, the motivation. What was the motivation? We must ask. Why is it that language thinking became central and language thinking began so early in the Indian tradition? It because because. we were we always valued knowledge and our our vedic vangamai massive vedic vangamai every ved has a samhitas every samhitas has corresponding brahmana granth brahmana granth have corresponding aranyakas aranyakas have corresponding upanishads and the upanishads have corresponding the shrauta sutras and the griha sutras and those have their corresponding prati shastra imagine such a large body of literature in the vedic vangmay but then the vedic vangmay is followed by the smriti shruti is followed by smriti the age of shastras of the technical technical treatises technical treatises it is followed then by the vyakhyana parampara commentary tradition commentary tradition which now for a long time so massive body of knowledge and society value i want to i have often done it i want to say this very clearly ke hum inko sacred text nahi mante ved hamare sacred text nahi hai na hi ye divine hai kai log kehte hain divine and uh, divine god given and uh, no not at all in fact uh, uh, the the earliest typology is shruti samriti ka shrut ye suna rishiyon ne suna जैसे महात्मा बुद्ध ने पेड़ के नीचे बैठ के कुछ समझा तो इट इज दिसेप्टर हु इज इंपॉर्टेंट नॉट दी रिवीलर नॉट दी टेलर हमारे यहाँ कोई रिवीलर नहीं है कोई गॉड आके किसी को नहीं बताता है बात यहाँ हमारी टेक्स डिवाइन नहीं है वेद डिवाइन नहीं है इसीलिए फ्रॉम डे वन वेद अपोस्ड बाई मटीरियल स्केप्टिक्स ऑलमोस्ट साइमल्टेनियसली अलॉन्ग विद वेदिक थिंकर बिकॉज दी अथर्व वेद Atharva Veda is in fact different from the first three Veda, and Atharva Veda became the Veda for the Iranians. They became fire worshippers, you see, and uh, we became we became the Yagic people, Yagic people. That was the earliest divide in this cultural, you know, holosphere, holosphere of cultural sphere. The first divide. So the 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 text these texts are is. Uh, uh, 
this uh, massive body that is composed massive body of literature it was valued as knowledge text knowledge not a secret not a secret aap vedon ko phad dijiye ved ko jala dijiye hamare yahan koi kisi ko patal nahi karega usse usse marega nahi kyunki gyan granth granth jo hota hai granth wo jind nahi hai granth jind nahi hai मतलब ये जो कोई पुस्तक लेके ये ये ग्रंथ नहीं है और ना ही ग्रंथ ये जो इसके अंदर इंक में छपा हुआ है शब्द ये भी ग्रंथ नहीं है ग्रंथ क्या है जो जिन जिस ज्ञान का ये शब्द राशि संकेत करती है जिस ज्ञान की ये शब्द राशि संकेत करती है दैट इज द ग्रंथ दैट इज द ग्रंथ सो यू कैन Tear it, you can burn it, but the jnana, jnana, that is that remains, that doesn't go, and that's why in the Indian tradition libraries have been burnt, libraries have burnt, universities have been destroyed, but we still have you know 10 million manuscripts, and nobody reads them, but the knowledge, India's knowledge, is embedded, sedimented into the minds of the ordinary people. ordinary people the ordinary people you talk to a rickshaw wala you talk to one who is driving an auto and if you are able to ask him some fundamental questions you will be amazed at the depth of knowledge that the ordinary indian has because the indian tradition has been oral and the knowledge has been communicated is disseminated orally from mind to mind the only qualification that you need need in order to gain this knowledge is that you should have ears and god has not put any cover on the ears he has put his lips on the eyes not on the ears so oral tradition is the most democratic tradition of knowledge most democratic you need no preparation aapko padhana nahi seekhna ke padhana aana chahiye kitab padh ke tabhi aapko gyan milega isliye in the morning these days if you open the tv channel millions of people listen to people listen to others and listen to others and uh, gain their gain that anyway so this is the motivation maintenance and preservation of this knowledge maintenance preservation you see rig veda composed almost at least 5000 years ago has come down in intact to us ek varna ka bhi bhed nahi hai ek sound bhi doubt mein nahi hai how is it happened because shakespeare's plays written in the 16th century when caxton press was already there they were published also even today there is a lot of scholarship about the authenticity of every line of shakespeare's plays ye marlo ki line to nahi thi ye kiska interpolation to nahi hai but in the vedic we have received that knowledge intact how that is where the sciences of phonetics etymology grammar you know they played a big part because the what the what the rishis did they permuted the text so a, a samhita is a continuous text continuous text hmm? like i was say uh, uh the uh, the uh any you take any continuous expression like uh, i i am not, i am not, i am not going to i am not going to say this i am not going to say this I am not going to say this. I am not going to say this. Now this is a continuous text. I, I not, am not, go, ing, to, say this. I am not going to say this. I am not going to say this. This is the samayata. These were these mantras, and they were segmented. Now to segment them, you needed morphology, you needed grammar, and you need phonetics. See, because and how will you divide otherwise? How will you divide? And you need to understand meaning, meaning, and because because if the, if you segment at a different place, the meaning will change something. See, meaning will change. Uh, uh, we used to have examples when I used to teach. Means like uh, uh, then if you if you stop, make a pause here, the meaning is different. If you make a pause at the next place, the meaning is different. So you needed the knowledge of semantics, grammar, phonology, morphology. In order to segment the text, part part, कहते थे, 
और उन टेक्स्ट को उन टेक्स्ट को वो फिर रीअरेंज करते थे इन सेवरल कॉम्बिनेशन डिफरेंट कॉम्बिनेशन लेट से ए बी सी डी इज दी टेक्स्ट ए बी सी डी तो ए बी बी सी सी डी बी ए डी सी सी बी बी सी एंड देन योर थ्री देन ए बी सी बी सी ए बी ए सी लाइक दिस परम्यूटेशन विच आर मोर एंड मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स करोपाट जटपाट घनपाट घनपाट एंड सिक्सटीन डिग्रीज ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ परम्यूटेशन एंड द ब्राइट शीशर्स वन एट ए टाइम दे यूज टू मेमोराइज दोज दोज रीअरेंज द टेक्स सो एट एनी गिवन टाइम एट एनी गिवन टाइम बाई यू कुड रिकंस्ट्रक्ट द टेक्सट फ्रॉम द माइंड ऑफ दोज पीपल All error will get eliminated. All error get get eliminated. My, I, uh, Max Miller in 19th century says, and he is on record. He says, even if all the copies of the Rig Veda are destroyed, you can reconstruct the Rig Veda from the minds of the Indian people. Pandito se, apko you can reconstruct. So it was possible to reconstruct, and the sciences of language developed. because the indians highly valued those knowledge texts and wanted to preserve them maintain them transfer them and transmit them disseminate them disseminate them and it was all done by by the mind created in the mind stored in the mind transferred from mouth to mouth inscribed in the mind when you transfer you inscribe in the mind and like that you see the tradition has continued alive for so many years the Uh, the growth of the uh, because uh, first of all in our linguistics we don't only deal with the spoken language vaikhari many best language spoken or written it like western linguistics is mostly about written language written language and uh, in vajasaini pratishakya uh, katayan says katayan says that uh, i am telling you the value of sounds in the text not in the speech Because the speech, how this is spoken, you can hear. But I am going to tell you in the text, this there is a there is a curve. How the curve in this context is to be uttered, uttered. So very clear. This is a this is the sandhi, sandhi. That is the coalescence of sounds in spoken language. Is a remarkable feature of Western language. You have no English grammar in your sandhi. Not that Sandhi does not take place in English. I just said, I am going to give you, I am going to give this. This is all Sandhi, but unfortunately, the English people didn't have a panini. They are not been able to work out the rules of Sandhi in detail in such a complex, comprehensive, rule-bound manner as panini has done. And therefore, the growth, the growth of the sciences, it is wrong to say that they evolved one after the other because. You know, you need all of them together in order to segment and analyze the text, and the spoken text, spoken text. They were all spoken text, and they were analyzed, segmented, permuted, and then you know, remembered by remembered by by different people. But the codification of each discipline, codification, can be shown in a hierarchy, in an evolution. The first codification text. Got formulated in phonetics. First text. Then the text got formulated in etymology. Hmm? Etymology would be in morphology also. You see. And then the text got. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. First phonetics. Then lexical. Lexical enumeration. You know, this is dictionaries. You call it. Yeah, lists. Lists are prepared. And then etymology. And then grammar. And uh, to cut the long story short, for example, in 9th century BC, 9th century BC, we have Yask. Yask was a Gujarati, Nagar Parker se, Paras karai nama people say, Nagar Parker se. He wrote his Nigantu and Nirukta. Nigantu meant dictionary listing, and in uh, in Telugu, even today, the dictionary is called Nigantu. You know, so Nigantu and Nirukta. He first made Classified lists of words. Classified. You see, each class he divided all the vocabulary into three parts. You know, that dealing with the word, that dealing with the cosmos, 
and that dealing with man, human beings, human beings. Right. They, and then subclassified each, subclassified into, into different sets. Remarkable, remarkable scientific exercise at analysis. And then he started etymologizing those words. So, for example, he made a set of 21 words beginning with go dhe dava, go. Now, this is again important and interesting, Jamkhet Kaji, because many of the modern historians, they say that Aryans used, Aryans used to eat cow, cow flesh. They used to eat beef, because the word go, go, go occurs in the ancient text. Now, go, go is a head word in Yasks, you know, that, cla that, uh, that class, class of words. That class of words refers to char pai animals which move from place to place, which cover a distance. So 21 animals, 21 words which refer to animals are a head word. The head word for that is go, go. So go is like if you have tiger, lion, deer, jackal, dog, and then on top you say animal, animal, animal. Tiger, elephant, jackal, dog. So go meant animal. But our learned historians, you know, they meant by they took dog. Go also means cow. Cow. It also means cow. It's like you know, animal also is a word in the class animal, isn't it? So that that way they said it is cow. And they started saying that they they ate they ate beef and all that. Anyway, to classify that, and then you know etymology. He does etymology. It's, uh, uh, it's very, 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 very interesting because the phoneticists in India, the phoneticists, mantra with them, they were, they always held themselves in very great esteem. They looked down upon grammarians because they said that we deal with substance and you deal with form. You deal with form. After Akriti or Rup se deal kato, from substance se deal kato. They say gold is the substance. Earring Banjati, a bangle Banjati, a Kangan Banjata. So, the substance and the form. The grammarians deal with form, but we are substance. And the mantra with those phoneticists, they said the correct pronunciation, enunciation of the mantra is important. If you correctly enounce a mantra, it will achieve its purpose. And they said they never stressed on meaning, never stressed on meaning. Pranav exact shuddha ucharan hona chahiye. Abhi mantra ka asar hoga, effect hoga, nahi to nahi hoga. But uh, Yask was a semanticist. He said that knowledge is important. If you uh, pronounce correctly without knowing the meaning. You say, Pandit ji, shadiyo mein mantra padhte hai? To kisi ko arth nahi pata? But he said that uh, eternal is the scorn of the ignorant for knowledge. Huh? And if you enounce a mantra correctly without knowing the meaning, knowing the meaning, then you are like the carrier of a sealed envelope, or you are like a pillar which simply bears the burden of the roof. Burden of the roof. So meaning is important, knowledge is important. And he started the science of interpretation. Because by that time, the Vedic language, the language in the Vedas, it has put a naturally compositional language freezes, and the spoken language changes. Many words in the Vedas have become opaque. The people didn't know the meaning, or their meaning had changed, and it did not apply in the context. So many people, particularly the materialist skeptics like Purna Kashyapa, Maskari Goshal and said Ajit Kesh Kambali, you know, we honor the, honor the dissenters also. They said that uh, these Vedic mantras are nilarthak, they are meaningless. Vedic mantras have no meaning. They are something contradictory, they are, there is a tautology or there is a repetition or they proscribe the impossible, hmm? impossible. So they are meaningless, they are meaningless. And therefore, we ask took it upon himself to make that grand proclamation that no linguistic utterance is meaningless, which much later 
much later, 18th century, Wittgenstein, others, you know, come that all Chomsky's green ideas sleep furiously. Hmm? Green ideas sleep furiously. Now, he said that this, this does not make sense. But no, it makes sense. A madman is likely to and it will mean something to him. So in that way, so that claim that are meaningless, Yas set upon himself the task of showing how to interpret the meaning. Linguistic utterances are not meaningless. We have to make the meaning. We have to construct the meaning ourselves. Right? Anyway, Kalendra? Kalendra? <coughs> Has he gone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a lot of hai. Yes, sir. Chup ho you no, I can't say that. My my daughter says, Papa, you talk too much. So I can keep on talking. But then I think everybody, most of the people will be tiring already. Yes. And, and it is I only we have we have only touched the touched the outer skin of the iceberg yes. of linguistic tradition. Yes. In fact, Joshi Ji ko chahiye. ये हमारे 10 12 लेक्चर कराएंगे तो हम इंडिया की लिंग्विस्टिक ट्रेडिशन पे बात कर पाएंगे अभी तो हमने फ्रेंच पे पहुंचे हैं फ्रेंच पे बट आई थिंक इट इज नाउ 5 ओक्लॉक नियरिंग 5 आई थिंक आई विल कॉल ए हॉल्ट हियर हां यस इज दैट ओके यस सर हां ऑल राइट थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर Kapoor sir, for your insightful lecture on Indian linguistic thought, I would request our Chancellor, Professor Arvind Jam Chetkar, for his uh, concluding remarks, if he has. <laughs> sir, uh, your uh, volume is uh, muted, yeah, unmuted. Hello. I am so glad that earlier I had only heard his name, but we have been in communication for last more than two years. <laughs> and when we meet in Simla, we have spent hours together talking to each other. Yes, sir. And it has been all the time making us more and more aware that well we should know our knowledge system. Just to give an example, we historians sometimes I take that role also. This thing called the fiction of I have to be told as a result. So, I'm going to so many historians. I realize that the best definitions of history has been published. And when I'm talk about the philosophy of history or the philosophy of art, the best principles of theoretical archaeology, I realize nobody in the knew it, not even in the 15th or 16th century AD, nobody must have to a better definition and calculation. Okay, says, Puranam Achyayika Dahadanam. Dharma Shastra, Dharma Shastra, Yaha. Now, complete definition of Achyayika is fortunately. Unfortunately, you have not to know about artistry, the new discipline we call it, or iconology. Because we have formulated some new words and we think that we know better. I think no other definition can meet this. He talks about that we have to know 
from the Purana, that is the region, which are there. Itivrittam, actual records, things which are happened and they have been noted. Purana are things which are known by tradition, heard. And Akhyaika, legions, legions about the king, given by the Sutras. And all these are for Kuda Haranam. Examples. These are examples from which we have to learn something. Actually, we have to learn something. And that is what we have been go on discussing about. <laughs> and he said, then you cannot understand history without an Antastra and Artisastra. It will be an hour to explain so what is the meaning of this definition. So, I will tell, in fact, I was uh, interviewed by Professor so, Professor of Archaeology, pro Indian and Indian history. I was a candidate, and he asked me, after the film, what was the date of the film? Yes. The technology child has a date. I don't exactly remember. Defines what is Rajya, and that exactly is the polarity of nothing else. He said that, well, first of all, you have to know what is the king. Swami, Amatya, Surut, Kosha, Rashtra, Durga, Balani. All the things that are shall be told. There is more than that. The modern child probably specifically explains to us. Because of our ignorance, so many things. But then, if you understand all these concepts from our own way of thinking, we are in a better way to understand the things. You can give so many examples. But today, I am so glad that I have that great opportunity without intervening in his talk to listen to him for one and a half hour. And it was a rewarding experience, I can tell you. He has gone to the basic things. Say, for example, we never thought in terms of geometry. And that is why the calculations which are being given by the Roman and Greek astronomers about the distances between two, two places which they saw or something like that, they are many times off the mark. There are mistakes. Because they, they do all these things on the basis of geometry, whereas Aryabhata, as rightly pointed out by uh, my dear friend, Kabilji, we thought in terms of mathematics. We always thought in terms of abstract things. And therefore, today he has just given the glimpse to us. And he will stand to his word, I am sure about it, he definitely is going to deliver something like lectures lectures in our series and we prepared for that. I am thankful to again Professor Kapil, uh, Kapil Kapoorji for his very illuminating talk which gives us now at least for us it is something like a glimpse. The real understanding of our distance will come when he goes on elaborating himself on these disciplines. Thank you very much Kapoorji. It was, you, it was a wonderful thing to meet you after a long time. Sir, I have a bad two thumbs up. On this opening. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, on behalf of Sir, uh, sir would you like to say? I am saying that you are saying. No, no, no. Sir, sir, would you like to add some comments? No. So, uh, on behalf of the Deccan College Bicentury Lecture and Webinar Subcommittee, I hereby propose the vote of thanks. Uh, I thank Professor Kapil Kapoor for his insightful thought on Indian linguistic traditions. 
Thank you, sir, for your such a thought-provoking lecture. I hope all of us got benefited from your views on Indian linguistic tradition. We may have occasion to listen to you more in lecture series. I take this occasion to thank our Chancellor for his gracious presence. I thank Professor Prashad Joshi for introducing Professor Kapil Kapoor. I thank Subhangi Kardile for making a formal introduction. I thank my committee members for their support to organize this event. Last but not the least, we thank you all for being with us this evening. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar.